So you might have already seen the viral video that Elon Musk and Neuralink put out yesterday of a monkey playing video games. And you might be asking yourself, how do you get a monkey to play a video game? Well, I'm here to give you an intuitive look about just how this can be possible, as well as what Neuralink is bringing to the field of neuroscience. So let's dive right in. Now, having a monkey control a computer with his brain is nothing new. In fact, if you would type brain-computer interface into Wikipedia, you would find not only Neuralink's logo, but this schematic. Now, this shows a monkey manipulating a joystick in a computer system, which will lead to him controlling a robot arm with his brain. And this comes from a pioneering paper in 2003 by Nikolailis. So you can see this is a quite old concept. So what is it that Neuralink is bringing to the game? Well, the typical electrode array that is being used today involves a series of straight pins. Now these are not very flexible and there are not many electrodes in these arrays. What Neuralink has built is a system which not only has a magnitude more of electrodes, but they're flexible and they're put in by some sort of sewing machine. Now, I'm not talking about your grandma sewing machine. I'm talking about a multi-million dollar piece of technology that uses computer vision to navigate around blood cells to reduce bleeding and the risk of infection upon implantation. This is Elon Musk's sewing machine. We know all about the sewing machine, but what about the electrodes? Well, each one of these threads contains about 32 electrodes and each array has 48 to 96 threads. You can read all about it in their 2019 paper. That's 1,500 to 3,000 electrodes. It's a ton of electrodes, but you're not here to learn about electrodes. You're here to learn about playing video games. So let's begin. The first step in teaching our monkey how to play a video game is to, of course, implant the Neuralink. Now this is done in an area of the brain called the motor cortex. This is where activity is generated when you have the intention to make a movement. Once our monkey has the implant in his brain, he will begin to play the game with a normal joystick. In this example, the monkey might have to make a series of movements to reach a goal. In this case, he'll have to move down, down, left, and left. And then he gets his reward, some tasty orange juice. Now, he would do this over and over again, but let's pull back and look at a single session. So in this case, he had to make four distinct movements with the joystick, and we might label each one accordingly. So for instance, this was the first time he moved down, the second time he moved down, the first time he moved to the left, and the second time he moved to the left. Meanwhile, the Neuralink is recording all of this information from its thousands of electrodes. But let's simplify things a little bit. Let's just take two electrodes and we can plot them on a graph. So let's think back to that very first movement where the monkey moved the joystick down. In our brain, there is electrical activity happening. So let's measure it. So we're measuring this electricity from these two electrodes when the monkey moves down. And we simply plot this activity. It might be there. Then the monkey makes another down movement, and we plot this activity, which might be there. Then the monkey makes a left, and we plot this activity, it might be there, and we do it one more time, and there's the activity again. Now you can imagine, if we run this experiment many, many times, we might get many, many data points. And with lots of data, we can do something which is very popular these days, machine learning. Now, this might sound fancy, but I'm gonna to try to give you a very intuitive feel about what this means and how it's used. Let's go back to our plot of data points. You and I can even see, even if I took the colors away, that there are some distinct groups of data here. So let's circle them. Now, every time the monkey moved the joystick, we plotted that activity, but we also had the information about which way he actually moved the joystick. These are called the true labels, which you can see in the color codes. Now, what we can do with those is label each group of data accordingly. 
So this might be down, this might be up, this might be when the monkey was resting, this could be when the monkey moved to the left, and this could be when the monkey moved to the right. Now, what machine learning does is it tries to find a rule that separates these classes from one another. For instance, it could say any time that the activity is less than 3 on electrode 1 and less than 0.5 on electrode 2, let's draw a plane. Now, this plane separates the left and the right classes from the other three classes, and it can keep repeating this process to find different separating planes. For instance, this plane might separate the up and down from the rest of the classes, and this plane nicely separates the left from right. But when we look at up and down, we find that we can't really find a nice plane that separates these two classes. Now, this leads to a problem because we have some overlap between the two groups, which will lead to errors. But luckily, we have thousands of electrodes. However, in this case, we're trying to keep things simple. So let's just add one more electrode and look at this in 3D space. You can see now, as we transferred our 2D to 3D, that you can nicely see a separation beginning between the two groups which previously had a problem. So you can imagine that if you had thousands of these dimensions, you might really be able to separate different groups of activity from one another even better. But in this case, let's just draw our planes separating these groups. Again, we can place our labels. Now what we have here is a visualization of our model. And once we have a model, well, we can let the monkey not play with a joystick anymore, but play with his brain. In this case, the monkey has to make the movements down, down, and to the right. So let's take this example and see what it looks like in real time in the model and in the game application. So we have our model and the monkey has his task. The first thing he has to do is move the cursor down, but without a joystick, he simply imagines that the cursor goes down. Maybe he even intuitively makes the motion. What happens is the activity in his brain is still present, and we still plot that somewhere within our space. For instance, here. Now, this represents a data point which is within the class of down. Therefore, our model sends the command down to the game, and the game reacts accordingly. The monkey still has to move down, so this whole thing repeats itself. Another data point appears within the class down, another command down is sent to the game, and the cursor moves down once again. And at the end, the monkey has to move to the right, you know the story, the activity in his brain says he wants to move to the right, the game is sent the command, and the cursor moves, and in the end, we are drinking delicious orange juice. And that, my friends, is how you teach a monkey how to play video games. So now use your brain and your joysticks, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video if you thought it was helpful, uh, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any other topics you might want me to cover in the future. It's a lot of fun to make, and I hope, again, you guys learned something. Till next time.